Biden IWD on the 2nd of March and the chief guest will be the President of the Republic of Kenya, Dr. William Samoe Ruto. Na nataka niseme ya kwamba mwashimiwa rais amechukulia sana maswala ya kina mama ameyapea kipaumbele na ndio maana hii siku alisema si ya kina mama tu but yeye as a champion of the gender equality and women empowerment atafika na atatuongoza katika shughuli hii so nawaalika nyinyi wote and please please promote your tailor promote your eh tunakuja tukiwa hivi african women so It gives me a great pleasure to be here with you today to participate in this conference. My appreciation goes to convenience of this important occasion for recognizing that women empowerment is a key component that propels sustainable development in all sectors. For this administration, women's economic empowerment is at the heart of our development agenda as envisioned in the Kenya Kwanza Alliance Women Charter. We are committed to leave no one behind as we engage women through advancing the Kenya Kwanza Nine Point Agenda on the gender equality and women's empowerment. Therefore, this conference themed getting women involved in Kenya's economic recovery is timely. The Kenya Kwanza government economic model is based on the framework of bottom-up economic transformation agenda into brackets better, which set out the administration's priority programs, policies, and reforms. We are currently finalizing the preparation of the fourth medium-term plan, 2023-2027, of the Kenya Vision 2030, that will prioritize implementation of, the, of economic recovery strategies of the new administration to reposition the economy on a steady, inclusive, and sustainable growth trajectory. Ladies and gentlemen, Kenya's economic recovery efforts are against a backdrop of global economic slowdown and pinned by the ongoing Russia-Ukraine conflict, elevated coal inflation and effects of the COVID-19 pandemic, and persistent supply chain disruption and the drought effect that have created agency of food security and climate change effects. This agency allow us to focus investment on mitigation adaptation and farm resilience as the effect of COVID-19 pandemic started to fade away, the Kenya economy bounced back, recording a GDP growth rate of 7.5% in 2021, propelled by heavy public investments in public infrastructure. However, the momentum has been slowed again by the Russian-Ukraine conflict that has disrupted gold trade through increased fuel, fertilizer and food prices. For the first time in five years, inflation rate in Kenya is above government target, range mainly driven supply, side constraints occasioned by the external shocks as well as drought effects. In addition, the drought impact in the economy has created a strong focus on food security and climate change. This effect will become dominant in economic management and focusing on its, equal, uh, on its quality and structure. We have witnessed how it has reserved 
effort in poverty er uh, reduction and inequality, but above all, promoted social conflicts. These effects are compounded and amplified by declining manufacturing productivity, skewed access to finance and business development, uh, business regulatory framework, weak governance, and physical risk, including uh, pens uh, pensions liabilities, stalled projects, uh, payment arrears, and high debt service that hindered the economy from achieving its full potential. Ladies and gentlemen, the need to address these constraints and bluster resilience forms the basis of Kenya Kwanzaa government bottom-up economic transformation agenda. The agenda is geared towards economic turnaround and inclusive growth and aims to increase investment in at least five sectors and envisage to have the largest impact and linkages to the economy as well as on household welfare. The key five sectors include agricultural transformation, micro, small, and medium enterprise, housing and settlement, healthcare, digital superhighway, and creative industry. Special focus will be placed on increased employment more equitable distribution of income, social security, while also expanding the tax revenue base and increase foreign exchange earnings. The implementation of these interventions is expected to stimulate economic recovery to 6.1% growth in 2023 from the estimated 5.5% in 2022. But more importantly, improve the quality of growth from public sector investment led growth to a dynamic private sector led growth. Against this backdrop and in line with this conference objectives, it is my hope that the discussions during this convening, uh, during this convening will offer tangible solutions on inclusive growth, especially on the role of women in Kenya's economic recovery. For our, from our end, the government has put in place various measures to promote inclusive growth and enhance women's participation in labor market and enterprise. First, to promote women in micro, small, micro and small enterprises, the government has allocated 50% of the 50 billion Hasla fund to women-owned enterprises. Further, we have Affirmative Action Fund, which include OESO Fund, the National Government Affirmative Action Fund, Youth Enterprise Fund, the Micro and Small Enterprise Authority, and Women Enterprise Fund. We are currently remodeling Women Enterprise Fund to provide a digital platform with short-term credit and innovative pro, uh, products. Further, we are in the process of innovating the fund's product to conform to the five priority priorities, that is agriculture, SMEs, healthcare, housing and settlements, and ICT and creative economy. I therefore encourage women entrepreneurs to take advantage of these funds and fully participate in government priorities area, projects, and program. Second, the government is fully enforcing the access to government procurement opportunities, into bracket, AGPO, that requires all public agencies to reserve 30% of procurement opportunities to women, youth, and persons living with disabilities. To increase the uptake, WEF LPO financing is available to women traders to facilitate the AGPO individual and groups to undertake procurement opportunities within government. Emphasis is on ensuring women-owned enterprises automatically qualify for LPO financing. It is our country's best model of promoting women 
in business and various countries have visited Kenya to benchmark. Third, the Kenya's digital superhighway master plan of the government is a noble area of focus. The importance of technology and digital trading is boosting women's economic empowerment can, cannot be underscored. In partnership with African Union, the 50 million African Women Speak Digital platform was developed and launched in Kenya early last year. The platform has the potential to accelerate women participation in inter-county and across-border trade for greater networking across the border. The ministry responsible for ICT has also established ICT hubs in almost all constituencies in the counties to promote digital trading. Women are urged to utilize various digital platforms to enhance their business activities. Fourth, the Intergovernmental Relations Act 2012 provides a framework of engagement between the national and county governments. The ministry has established and launched the Intergovernmental Coordination Structure on Gender, which has a legal mandate to coordinate gender development between national and county governments. These intergovernmental coordination structures on gender culminate in the establishment of various frameworks such as gender sector working groups which coordinate development partners implementing gender equality and women empowerment. I believe that women entrepreneurs will utilize these existing structures to increase the women's participation in the economic empowerment through bottom-up economic model. Ladies and gentlemen, as you are aware, the informal sector employs more than 70% of the Kenyans, majority of who are women in medium, in key sectors of our country's economy. I take cognizant that the thematic areas in this conference will enhance genesis of visionary women economic empowerment. When women have a source of income, there are no path to becoming a health and empowered economic actor. Women who are able to decide where, when, and how to spend their income see improvements in their social and economic status and the level of resources devoted to their children. To conclude, I wish to appreciate and thank all organizations represented in this forum for your commitment in joining us today as we exchange ideologies that champion women economic empowerment in our beloved country. I wish you fruitful deliberations and looking forward to reading the outcome document from this meeting. It is now my pleasure to declare this conference officially opened. Thank you. God bless you all. Asante ni sana. Kwa kunipa masikio yenu.